When we talk about climate change, we're often talking about the human ability to cope with change. Mass migrations, flooded coasts, instability in supply chains. The problem seems bigger than any of us. And yet, one geneticist is rising to the challenge. Joanne Corey believes plants can save the world. So I'm a good example of what happens in two generations of an immigrant family. I know how to cook the Lebanese food, and I know some swear words, but I don't remember any of the other nice words my parents said. Corey grew up near Boston, interested in anything but plants. When she first walked into Harvard's plant biology lab, she was nearly 30 years old with a PhD from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and a background in bacterial genetics. But in the greenery, Corey saw opportunity. And I said, I could really make a difference in this field. And that meant a lot to me, you know, to make a difference. Corey joined the lab as a researcher and began to tackle some of the biggest questions in plant biology. In one experiment, she doused thousands of seeds with a gene mutating chemical and planted them in darkness. Studying the handful of ghostly white mutated plants that sprouted, Corey worked out the mechanisms that prevent plants from growing in the dark. I like working on plants because I don't mind killing them, <laughs> I guess. Over the next decade, Corey's star grew as she deconstructed plant genetics, discovered new hormones and teased out their elaborate roles. She joined the prestigious Salk Institute in 1988, and as more and more pieces of the biological puzzle fell into place, she grew closer to her ultimate goal, revolutionizing agriculture with science. Crops that grow bigger, produce more, replenish nutrients in soil. By 2004, Corey was on her way. I was in my 40s. I had some stiffness on my left side. I had a good doctor and he sent me to a neurologist and he looked at me and said, you have Parkinson's. My son was in kindergarten, my daughter was in third grade, I think. And I tried to explain it to him, but I didn't look as sick then as I do now, you know. So I had one, um, I always get a little cheery when I tell this. But anyways, I had one goal, and that was to get my kids out of high school. And this year, they're both, they're 28 and 25, and they both got engaged. So they're out of high school, they're out of college, they got jobs, and now they're getting married. So I feel like I lasted long enough to get them there. Following her diagnosis, Corey never stopped working, pushing out breakthrough research with the help of medication. When the medication began to lose effect, an experimental brain implant kept her symptoms at bay as she churned out 117 publications in 10 years. In 2014, Corey's symptoms were beginning to catch up to her. That same year, greenhouse gas levels in Earth's atmosphere passed a critical threshold. Despite her illness, Corey felt she had to do something about it. With research partners at Salk, she formed the Harnessing Plants Initiative, embarking on her most ambitious scientific endeavor yet, to find a way to reverse climate change. Plants breathe in atmospheric carbon, removing it from the air and using it to build roots, trunks, and leaves. When plants decay, the carbon can remain locked into the soil for thousands of years. Left to nature, the effects aren't big enough to offset climate change. Corey's ultimate discovery coaxes plants to do more by selectively breeding crops to contain higher levels of a chemical called suberin. Suberin is perfectly safe. In fact, you consume it every time you eat potatoes. The effect of elevated suberin is bigger crops with deeper roots that bury massive amounts of carbon in the ground, potentially enough to combat the climate crisis. So the plants don't have to move and do any new function. They're just doing something they already do. But we just want them to do it a little better. There's still much work to be done, but each day Corey arrives at the lab focused as ever, determined to convince the world that plants can save it. I developed this passion for the climate. You know, this is something that's not like my old research to me. My old research to me was really great, but this is really like getting the plants that's gonna save the world, maybe, you know? <laughs>